In a time when the world is facing an unprecedented health crisis, taking responsibility is a path we all must tread. Common enemy COVID-19 confronting the globe presently is not a respect of race, religion, status, or even location. It is then necessary that we all take the safety protocol to win COVID-19 as well as make our world a safer place. This is Baker's World on NTA, your one-stop Baker's show on television. I am Funke Oyele, your host. Many thanks for watching. On this special episode of Baker's World, we will focus on the baking industry amid COVID-19 pandemic. We'll be showing you what bakers are doing in the midst of COVID-19. The effects of COVID-19 on cake shows, cake trainings, cake businesses, and lots more. This special episode promises to be a package to remember. Don't go anywhere. When the ravaging virus that broke out in December 2019 at Wuhan, China, started spreading, little did anyone know that it will become a global pandemic. Coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, is spreading fast from one country to another like a wildfire that can hardly be contained. Over 5 million people globally have been infected and hundreds of thousands have lost their lives to the dreaded virus. This kind of thing has never happened in our generation. So we had to start um, informing ourselves and doing a lot of networking to know how others are coping and how to proceed, uh, especially during the lockdown. No one could actually predict what was going to happen after the lockdown, looking at the, the TV, the news from America and all over the world, it, it was, you know, just filling the airspace with all kinds of negativities. So what I did was I took some things home to start, and now started advertising. We are still baking. We are still working. We're working from home. There's this hashtag, working from home. Do you get so they are not scared that the staff are coming from where they don't know they're going to infect the things that we're doing. No, I said no, no staff for now. It just declared ways of containing coronavirus, which include frequent hand washing, social and physical distancing, coughing or sneezing into elbows, and the greatest of all is the total or partial lockdown in some countries. Here in Nigeria, the most worrisome method of curtailing the virus is the lockdown in some states. This is because it affects the social economic activities of the people. Thank God that the, in Mr. President's speech, there was um, um, a mention of the food industry as part of the essential services needed. On that premise alone, we started working towards having more like a skeletal service. The delivery part, I told them that all they need to do is uh, make sure they are well kitted. For example, I have, I have um, uh, the cap here, just a safety net. Just put this on. Even if you are in your car for a delivery, you let this uh, be on you. And then you put on your face mask. And I, I had to demonstrate it to them just this same way. And most of, and I told them to also put on their aprons. They can put on their aprons. They can put on uh, their chef's jacket so that uh, anyone that sees them on the road will know that, oh, this one um, is safety conscious. Usually we cut off for events, majorly. We do wedding cakes, birthday cakes and all. 
And uh, secondly, there are no schools that are open. We also do birthday cakes for kids in school. That is another huge part that has been stopped. I know that a whole lot of uh, startups, people who are just beginning because of, you know, the reality, have decided to just close. Yes, it's that bad. Some people cannot cope with, you know, for instance, the pricing. When you go to the market, everything is double, some triple. Most of the tools we use in Nigeria are actually from China. And I know so many suppliers, so many vendors have their goods stuck in China. It has not even been produced. Now they have to produce and send it. Now goods coming from China are having to go through a lot of uh, scrutiny because all this originated from there. And so a lot of pressure is being taken and so goods are affected. In the baking world, Cake shoes in Abuja and some other part of the country have been suspended indefinitely as a result of the lockdown. It might interest you to know how bakers who had to put their shoes on hold felt. People were not gathering, so events were cancelled. I actually had a wedding cake that was, you know, meant to be sometime in April. It was called off a whole lot of other schedules were just cancelled and what we're doing was just praying to God that this will not continue. There are some shows I have paid for that um, were not able to hold, like um, uh, Lagos State um, chapter of uh, the ICs, that is International Cake Exploration Society, were to hold um, their first, their maiden exhibition in April around that Easter. That was, that had to be cancelled. It's quite impressive to know that some bakers could show love to the less privileged in the midst of the pandemic. The thing about reaching out, for me, it's very important. I think that I do not need to wait and sit down until I get as much as Dangote has. I think I, I shouldn't sit down and wait until I have all the billions. I think if I'm able to feed one, I should feed. I won't sit down to wait until I have to feed a thousand. And so I will use this opportunity to say, if you're not able to feed a thousand, you can feed a hundred. If you're not able to feed a hundred, you can feed one. We are here to bring you another variety of a fried sweet bread. You can make this for your kids' lunch. You can make it for the kids at home. For adults also, they will enjoy it. It's a very nice, soft and um, uh, sweet um, bread. Here is my flour rolled into the Okay, I make a well. My dry ingredients go in first. I start with the yeast, powder, baking powder, Salt, my sugar, then I give it a mix. My oil, eggs, vanilla. And finally, my water, like three over four cup. Keeping one over four to see how my dough goes before adding the remaining. I'm going to bleed it for the dough itself. Okay. And here is our dough. After one hour. Over the years, social media have always been where bakers find inspiration, education, motivation and connection that help them enjoy sweet business success. Thank you so much to Zoe's mom 
who taught me how to speak this two minutes French? <laughs> um, frozen from us. I hope you love it just the way we do. Social media and baking right now. It's because of the pandemic, COVID-19, everyone talks about, everyone knows it's in Nigeria, you know. So a lot of bakers have gone into their social media platforms since before this lockdown was eased. You know, you couldn't walk into any store anymore, appointments. Like, I'm a home baker. Nobody can just show up to my house anymore, for instance. So the only way I can... Um, market I, I saw myself marketing my business was to go on instagram go on facebook go on twitter to let customers know that hey we're still available to deliver yummy cakes but we don't want anyone walking in like before because of health reasons covid19 and that's why social media has been a great help to our business at this time Social media platforms such as Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, ETC are baker's window to the world. As soon as the lockdown was declared, resilient bakers promptly migrated to the social media platforms to display their creative pieces as they worked from home. Just do right now is make use of social media. Lots of all that were not so into it have now realized the importance of it. Now that's what we can use because you can't do face-to-face -face classes right now because of social distance. So the only thing you can do right now is to do online classes, which lots of people have embraced. Those tools that people were not using are now what they are using to make money. I am Aladdin Major Labi for your Bloomy Bot Cakes and this beautiful day we are going to be baking our vanilla print sponge. These are the ingredients we need for this cake. We need our butter, we need our flour, we need our salt, we need our eggs, we need our sugar, our milk, flavor, the bicarbonate of soda, baking powder, egg whites and buttermilk. For your buttermilk, if you can get the store bought buttermilk. Just do it yourself at home. It's a cup of full cream milk to one tablespoon of vinegar. I'll be showing us how to make um, our classic red velvet cake. And the first thing is uh, the oil, the sugar, and of course the egg. The eggs goes into the mixing bowl. We use the egg whisk. All our powdered ingredients can as well go into the flour. Our flavor, there's our flavor goes right into the mixture. Then after whisking the egg, the sugar, we can now start um, adding our flour. We can even play with the. Um, of course, our color, then, of course, we have um, some of the flour, goes at least like three, four times. Can't wait to have a taste of this. The pep already lined on baking pan. For now, I think we're trying to help each other through the same social media platform, you know. People are like, oh, pay a certain amount and learn 
this, pay a certain amount and learn that. And I've been seeing a lot of good reviews, like bakers that do that. I've been seeing some good reviews, like people actually are practicing at home, especially during the time um, the government locked down for real, like no going out or anything. I saw a lot of people advertising online classes on, especially Instagram. And a lot of them were posting, like, you know, go on Telegram, or having this business class on Telegram, we're having this on Instagram live, come to soon and so time. And so many people did participate. <music> Although many businesses worldwide incurred losses at this time, the COVID-19 pandemic season may be the best time for some bakers to make necessary adjustments in creativity, productivity, and exploring more recipes that could meet the needs of clients. The government said no more large gatherings, you know, not more than 20 people for large gatherings. If you put other big cakes like 12 and 8, right now everyone is going smaller. Like they're going for 8 inch, they're going for 10 inch, they're going for loaves, they're going for cupcakes, they're going for mini dessert boxes instead of big, big, like, you know. And I think bakers, we should all be ready for that kind of a change. Yes, it's the, the, the amount of income won't ring up to what it normally used to be. I think it's time for us to explore those recipes we've kept for so long, the recipes we've not used in a long while. You just kept it, oh, I think, oh, nobody wants a small cake. I think it's the time to try and bring new things to the game. This is what you have now. You need to take some decisions, you need to re-strategize, you need to plan, you need to quickly, you know, look at steps, things that you need to do so that at the end of the day, you know, things, uh, it, you, it, there'll be a, a soft landing for every baker in, um, in Nigeria and the world. Bakers provide essential confectionaries for clients' low-key celebration. It is pertinent to thoroughly follow hygiene guidelines. In the processes of making the pastries, the cakes, whatever we are doing at this point in time, COVID-19 calls for optimum level of cleanliness. Where clean people, by the way, you know, by the fact that we are handling food, it's very important. The hygienic level of, you know, uh, the bakers must be on top notch. Now, we must take that as priority, teaching the, the workers to also take that as the, the new norm. In order to help fight and contain the virus, here are some precautionary measures you can take. So those surfaces are what you can use that is safe for food. Because what you can use, you know our normal jig? Our normal bleach that we use, we have to dilute it to certain, certain level. We normally call it, there, there is a level we normally give that is safe. We call it about 200 ppm. So to make use of that, you can just use one tablespoon of jig in a gallon of water. It will give them the concentration that they need to, you know, not, you know they, where they normally work upon might be greasy or so, but you, before you do that, you have to clean or scrub that surface very well to take off the grease and everything. It's like you washing, preparing the surface. You now disinfect with the solution I've just mentioned now. That same solution we can also use to wash our instrument, like you know our baking pans, the board we use, the cut, all the instruments we use in baking. You soak it for about maybe five to 10 minutes, should be okay. We now take those instruments out to air dry. But just because bleach at times can make those instruments to rust. So in order to prevent that, after we've removed them from those solutions, we can now boil water and pour it over those instruments and take them out and lay them to dry, air dry. Then you can now store them. Bakers should be socially responsible to keep baking activities going in the midst of the pandemic in order to help fight and contain the virus. Since there is always an expiry date to every problem, coronavirus pandemic would surely come to an end. 
The reality is a new normal of transacting business imposed by the pandemic are sure to stay. I think bakers should try and bring out more creative concepts for smaller packages. Like we used to cater for desserts like 100, 200. But right now on Instagram, on WhatsApp, on Telegram, on Facebook, whichever platform we are in, we're actually advertising like mini boxes. Like, oh, we can have mini boxes of dessert for 12. You understand? Because there's no party for now. Uh, well, I want to say that uh, change is uh, one constant thing that is absolutely inevitable. And our ability to open up our spirit to embrace change is something that will make us thrive. We are not supposed to give up because it is coming to pass. Most of the shops now have um, hand washing apparatus outside their shops. Outside their offices, you need to wash your hands. They will give you hand sanitizer. And then they put signs up that there is no entry if you don't have your face mask on. That is very, very key. I see that um, continuing even after the lockdown is lifted. Just as the churches have been given uh, directives on what to do if they want to open. I think offices too will do that and bakers are not left out. I hope you've seen that bakers in Nigeria are being able to wade through this pandemic through hard work, resilience and creativity. Let us all unite to fight this virus by being responsible and doing all the right things to remain safe. That's our package for you today on Baker's World. Do reach us via social media platform for your comments and feedbacks through Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. It's Baker's World on NTA. So we'll come your way next week for another interesting episode. I am your host, Funke Oyele.